Small World, the world of informative flashcards. Flashcards and Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act or Republic Act 9995. First Case State v. Ryan Jarvis Case involving voyeuristic teacher leads to clarification of law relating to private versus public places and provides valuable lesson for employers. Canada, on August 27, 2019, former Ontario school teacher Ryan Jarvis was sentenced to six months in jail and 12 months probation after the Supreme Court of Canada, or SCC, convicted him of voyeurism earlier this year. Although this is a criminal decision, it is nevertheless instructive for employers as the decision clarified the law relating to private versus public places, in particular an individual's expectation of privacy. The decision also demonstrates how workplace policies, which clearly outline objectionable conduct, assist employers in setting workplace standards and expectations. Background Jarvis was a high school English teacher in London, Ontario. In 2011, a colleague reported that Jarvis was secretly recording students with a pen camera. The principal observed Jarvis with his pen and secured the device for police. The device contained 35 video files recorded over a six-month period. The videos featured 27 female students between the ages of 14 and 18 engaged in conversations with Jarvis. The students were largely seated in classrooms at the time they were recorded, wearing revealing tops, with the videos recorded at downward angles. Boyerism under the Criminal Code Jarvis was charged with 27 counts of voyeurism. Voyeurism, a comparably new sexual offense under the Criminal Code, required the Crown to establish that a. the visual recordings were made secretly b. the student's circumstances gave rise to a reasonable expectation of privacy and c. the recording was done for a sexual purpose. It was not disputed that the recordings were made secretly. However, the Superior Court was not satisfied that Jarvis made the recordings for a sexual purpose, indicating that other inferences could be drawn. Conversely, the Court of Appeal found that the videos were clearly made for a sexual purpose, but the students did not have a reasonable expectation of privacy when in common areas of a school. Supreme Court of Canada The SCC found that a person does not lose all expectations of privacy simply because they are in a place where they know they can be observed by others or from which they cannot exclude others. Rather, the entire context must be considered to determine if a reasonable expectation of privacy arises, including Awareness of or consent to the observation or recording The subject matter, content, and purpose of the observation or recording The relationship between the person observed and the person who did the observing or recording any rules, regulations, or policies that govern the observation or recording in question, and the personal attributes of the person who was observed or recorded. While the students were in school common areas at the time they were video recorded, they were teenagers and were recorded by their teacher in breach of the relationship of trust and in breach of school board policy. 
The videos targeted females, were at close range, and focused particularly on the students' breasts. When considering the entire context, the SCC found that there could be no doubt that the students' circumstances gave rise to a reasonable expectation that they would not be recorded as they were. Second Case State versus Glass On April 26, 1999, Glass took pictures of the skirts of two women working at the Valley Mall in Union Gap, Washington. Inez Mosier was working in the ladies' department at Sears when Glass caught her attention. Glass was lurking near her and acting suspiciously. Mosier saw a flash out of the corner of her eye and turned around to discover Glass squatting or sitting on the floor a few feet behind her. She later noticed a small, silver camera in his hand. The same day, Chantel Phillips was working at a cart in the main hallway of the mall. As she helped a customer, she heard a click and saw a flash illuminate behind her, level with her knees. She turned and observed Glass retreating with a camera in his hand. Police later confiscated the film, revealing pictures of Mosier's and Phillips' undergarments. Decision on the Case of Glass Following the bench trial, the trial court found Glass guilty of voyeurism under RCW 9A 44.115. The Court of Appeals, Division III, affirmed the conviction, despite Glass claims that the statute was unconstitutional. Third Case State v. Sorrells on July 21, 2000, Sorrells attended the Bite of Seattle at Seattle Center with a video camera. Jolene Jang was standing in line to buy ice cream when she noticed Sorrells behind her. Jang thought that Sorrells had his hand on her purse, so she reacted and Sorrells fled from the line. A witness later informed police that she had observed Sorrell's videotaping underneath little girls' dresses. Police viewed a copy of the videotape from Sorrell's camcorder and discovered images of children and adults, including Jang. Many of the images were taken from ground level, recording up the female skirts. Sorrells filed a motion to dismiss his case in King County Superior Court, contending that the voyeurism statute did not apply to pictures taken in a public place. The trial court denied Sorrells' motion and found him guilty on stipulated facts. In light of Glass, Sorrells appealed directly to this court. We accepted review and consolidated the two cases. Following the bench trial, the trial court found Sorrells guilty of voyeurism under RCW 9A 44.115. Sorrells filed a motion to dismiss his case in King County Superior Court contending that the voyeurism statute did not apply to pictures taken in a public place. The trial court denied Sorrell's motion and found him guilty on stipulated facts.